goal, number 24, Diego Restrepo. On defense, number four, Stuart Campbell. Number 18, Jay Nita. Number seven, Frankie Sanfilippo. Number three, Andres Arango. At midfield, number nine, Raphael Cox. Number 11, Shane Hill. Number 22, Keith Savage. Number eight, Luke Mulholland. At forward, number 15, Mike Hammersley. At number 10, Georgie Ristock. Available substitutions for the Brownies this evening. Number one, Andrew Fontaine. Number 13, Thurston Johnson. Number five, Kyle Clinton. Number 20, Evan Springbaugh. Number 16, Amani Walker. And number 21, Devin Delno. Just a couple short hours ago, I had an opportunity to speak with Caleb Porter about this match.
say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave <laughs> or the land of the free and the heart soccer match March 9th remember the impact came to town knocked off the timbers and we wondered what kind of side Portland would have in 2013 well they haven't dropped a match since it has been 95 count them 95 days since Portland has lost last been on the losing end in a soccer match and can they keep it going tonight in all competitions, 13 consecutive matches without defeat. And here come the Tampa Bay Rowdies from the second division in North American soccer, the NASL. This is a fourth round game in the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. Welcome to a chilly Gerald Winfield in the Rose City of Portland, Oregon. I'm Keith Blyer, alongside former Portland Timber and MLS goalkeeper Aiden Brown. The winner of this one advances to the quarterfinals. And let us get right to the Tire Factory starting lineups as both teams set themselves out here under cloudy skies and a temperature of about 56 degrees. First, 
for the visiting Rowdies from Tampa Bay under head coach Ricky Hill, who has three caps with the England national team. After 13 years with Luton Town, you hear the whistle, and we're underway. They are in all black, headed away from the Timbers Army, and go direct right away over the byline. A quick goal kick here for the Timbers. The starting 11 for the Rowdies, Andres Arango on the left side in the back. Captain Frankie San Filippo and Jay Needham are the center halves. Stuart Campbell is the right back. The flat four in the midfield, two holding mids. Uh, from left to right, it's Raphael Cox, the Pacific Northwest native. Keith Savage, the former Portland Timber. And Shane Hill, the coach's son in the middle. Luke Mulholland will play out on the right. The two forwards for the Rowdies, Mike Ambersley and a Bulgarian by the name of Georgi Ristov who is scoring goals for fun in the NASL, and he's got two in U.S. Open Cup play for a total of seven. The Rowdies get most of the touches here in the first minute of the match. Another long ball, however, over the byline. Another goal kick for the Timbers. Here's your tire factory starting 11 for head coach Caleb Porter, who talks almost daily about achieving things, winning trophies, claiming hardware taking this match very seriously, but you will hear some new names, shall we say, in their 4-3-3. Ryan Miller's back on the left side for Portland. Rashawn McKenzie is a starting center back alongside AJB, Andrew Jean-Baptiste. Diego Valeri weighs the captain's armband and he sends across, a, across the top of the six from the far corner. It is handled by Tampa Bay and they build out. The other two midfielders with Valeri are Michael Nanchoff, former Akron Zip, played under Porter there, and Ben Zemanski, another Zip in the midfield tonight for the Timbers. The three forwards are Trencito, Jose Adolfo Valencia, Frederick Piquion, and Khalif Alassane. So we are into the third minute now. Aiden, let's bring you into the broadcast. These are always dangerous matches for the MLS side. Uh, but they did so well against Wilmington, and they're so concentrated under Caleb Porter. Uh, I'm not sure if we expect anything less than the best. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. I, I definitely wouldn't think so. But you definitely have to give Tampa credit. They're a very strong side. Got some very dangerous players, especially Mike Ambersley, April's NASL Player of the Month. So this is a team that can hurt you. So you want to get on that scoreboard early. Andrew Jean-Baptiste controls the ball for the Timbers. Touches forward, square to Zemanski. Long, driven ball up the far side of the park. Far too much for Khalif al -Hassan. And we've got a throw in here for Tampa Bay. Rowdies come all the way from the southeastern corner of the United States. As you all know well, they do so after a big win over the Seattle Sounders in the third round. They beat the Sounders 1-0. Ristov scored the goal for Tampa Bay. Diego Restrepo, the goalkeeper for Tampa, saved a penalty kick. Denied Obafemi Martins in the 86th minute. Did the same thing in the game before as well, Keith. Let me take that back. That was Luke Mulholland. It wasn't Mike Ambersley. It was Luke Mulholland. That was April's player of the month. Okay. Throw in on the far side for the Timbers. They lose possession momentarily, but then it's collected by Salzizo. Now back into the possession of the Rowdies wearing an all-black kit with yellow trim. The Timbers are in their predominantly white strip with a uh, red sash, if you will, across the front. Nearly four minutes gone. Both teams kind of settling into this match. And as we've grown accustomed to upsets across the country in the U.S. Open Cup. Sporting Kansas City, the defending champions, will be surrendering the Dewar Challenge Trophy. They lost this evening to Orlando City, 1-0. How about that? Carolina, the Railhawks, beat Chivas, 3-1, Aiden. And Charleston, the battery, up on Real Salt Lake, 2-0 in the second half. Amazing. Wow. And the Timbers are pretty familiar with that. If, if you go back to last year, Cal FC. I mean, it was one of those things. Chris Boyd misses a penalty kick. They lose 1-0. That, that, uh, it happens. Yeah, Eric Winalda's ragtag crew came up here last year. And that was uh, 
if not the final nail in the coffin of John Spencer's tenure in charge of the Timbers, it was certainly one of the nails that was driven in to this struggling side a year ago. My, how things have changed. Foul in the middle of the park on Rashawn McKenzie. He wears number 31 for the Timbers. Whistle blows. The officials for this one, Ismail Elfath, is the man in the middle. His assistants are Colin Arblaster and Jeremy Hansen. The fourth official is Carlos Tercero. Timbers, as you know, advanced to the fourth round of the U.S. Open Cup with that dominant 5-1 win over Wilmington. Uh, the Hammerheads just a couple weeks ago. By this point, Piquion had a hat trick, <laughs> or, or so it seemed. He had four goals in the first half. Low driven ball by Luke Mulholland is cleared away and the Timbers push their line. Tampa Bay goes all the way back to Restrepo. He'll curl one around a rushing Valeri to Stuart Campbell. Campbell makes a nice move on Piquion and then drops it back to his goalkeeper. Restrepo in the gray goalkeeping uniform. Chest pass down at the top of the attack by Mike Ambersley. Down to Shane Hill, uh, offside position was Ristov and a quick restart here for the Timbers. And that's Ka classic Caleb Porter soccer right there, pushing the other team high, trying to make them make a mistake and capitalize off that mistake. Zemanski, little three-man combo in the back with McKenzie and Jean-Baptiste. Now it's on the far touch line. Zizo curls one around for Valeri. Cleared away by Tampa Bay. And a strong volley ahead by the captain, Frankie Sanfilippo. Controlled in the middle of the park by Shane Hill. Shane Hill drops for Keith Savage, former Timber. Back at Geldwin Field, as he knows, PGE Park. In an offside position was Mike Ambersley. He was spotted nicely, but was about two or three yards off. And the Timbers will get it back. But I, it's a bright start here for the visitors, I think, in the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Yeah, I think so. I think they're definitely a lot more, a lot more fluid, a lot more momentum going their way right now. I think uh, the Timbers need to get the ball on the ground and let, do, let the ball do some of the work. Gets Long ball played ahead by Jean-Baptiste into the chest of Piquillon, drops for Valeri. Valeri was a wizard against Chicago over the weekend. Diagonal ball played in by Hill. Ristoff in the near corner here, going 1v1 on McKenzie. Cuts it back, top of the 18, out to Savage. Keith Savage passes up a pass, or a shot, excuse me. Sends it wide, cross comes in off of Ristoff over the end line. Didn't really know much about it. Might have glanced off McKenzie before it hit Ristoff, the Bulgarian. Another goal kick here for the Timbers. Well, nearly eight minutes gone, and there is no score in this fourth round U.S. Open Cup match between the Timbers and the Tampa Bay Rowdies of the NASL. Tampa Bay comes in with an even 3-3-3 three, three, and three record in NASL play. Obviously, they've got five wins if you add the two U.S. Open Cup victories. Valencia, awkward touch. Great shot from the left corner of the 18 by Michael Nanchoff. Brilliant finish. Hits it first time. Restrepo has no chance. Side netting far post. And against the run of play, we should say it is 1-0 Portland. What a beautiful strike from Nanchoff. Purely technique right there. Great technique. Gets his foot over the ball. I believe it was Valencia who got ahead on it. Comes out wide. Nanchoff runs off the play. You can't strike a ball any better than that. No chance for Diego Restrepo. Took it off the high bounce. And lashed it into that side netting on the far post. Another early goal in U.S. Open Cup play for the Timbers. It was Freddie Piquion against the Hammerheads tonight. It's Michael Nanchoff. And here's a 24-year-old who has not played at all in Major League Soccer. We really haven't seen him, period. He announces himself to the Timbers here in fine fashion. Now wins the ball again at midfield, comes from behind on Shane Hill. Plays it to Zemanski. John Baptiste goes to the far side. Light touch, or heavy touch, excuse me, by Alassane there. Nearly dispossessed, but works hard to keep the ball. Comes square to Ryan Miller. Miller down the line for Valencia. And that one is shielded out to touch by Stuart Campbell. 
35 year old Brit who spent eight years playing with Bristol Rovers over there in England. Now in the American second division. I got to say, great defensive work by Khalif al to win that ball back there. I don't think that's something you would have seen out of him a year, two years ago. Zemanski knocks one away from Savage. Now it's Nanchoff into the feet of Piquion. His jersey's tugged from behind by Jay Needham. Piquion drops to al -Hassan. Timbers lose possession here in the attacking half. It's Rafael Cox out of Tacoma, Washington. 2009 draft pick of Real Salt Lake with a touch out on the far side. Aimless ball played forward by Arango, and here come the Timbers again. Nanchoff straight away about 35 yards from goal. Diagonal ball into Trencito. Cuts back to the inside. Shoots. It's blocked. Piquion has a touch by the penalty spot. Dribbles into the corner of the 18. Cuts back toward the middle. Dispossessed nicely by Shane Hill. Shane Hill's direct ball is taken away on the slide by Ryan Miller. Miller gets a shout tonight. Started the first two MLS matches of the year for the Timbers. It's amazing how soccer can, can go sometimes. Tampa Bay had a, a lot of possession, a couple opportunities in the attacking third. Timbers snatch a goal pretty much out of nowhere on a beautiful left-footed blast by Nanchoff, and now all of a sudden Portland's in control of the match. And we talked about opportunities at the beginning of the broadcast, and he started this opportunity for himself on a very high note. Gets another touch, does Nanchoff, and then lofts a ball over the top on the far side for Alassane. Now it's back to Sal Zizo. Good to see Zizo back at full strength. Was very productive off the bench in Chicago over the weekend. That two-all draw. Timbers wanted a victory. They were up 2-0. Lost it in the final 25 minutes of the match. When we say lost it, we mean lost the two points they thought they had stolen from the fire. They ended up, of course, with a draw to continue that unbeaten streak. It's now at 12 in MLS play. John baptiste gets a square ball from McKenzie out to Zizo. Zizo bends one in intended for Piquion, headed away by Jay Needham. Controlled by Alassane. They go back into Piquion. Right-footed collection. Mulholland comes in from behind. Handball called on Piquion. Explains himself to Elfath, the referee. And Restrepo will restart things for Tampa Bay. So it's Michael Nanchoff from deep on the Timbers bench directly onto the score sheet. one nothing Timbers. Just under 13 minutes gone at Jeldwen Field. Sky's starting to brighten a little bit. It's been a rainy afternoon in the Rose City. Valencia into the feet of Nanchoff. Nice little flick with his back heel. But it was well read there by the defender, San Filippo, who spent over a decade playing in the lower divisions in America. San Diego product. Five years the senior of the San Diego man for the Timbers, Sal Zizo. Wow, Jay Needham went in hard on Valencia on the throw-in. Surprised there wasn't a foul called there. Instead, it's off of Valencia and a throw-in for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Down the line, Ristoff tries to control. Miller's all over him. Ristoff wearing the headband to control that long hair. He's got tattoos all over both arms, and he's got plenty of goals, seven of them, in the 2013 campaign. Now it's Alisson, double team in the far corner. Drops for Zizo. Zizo square to Valeri. Three-man combination doesn't come off. Alassane checked his run. Tampa Bay back in possession. Sunshine at Jeldwin Field now. Splashes the awning on the far side of this wonderful soccer facility. Timbers go all the way back to Milos Kosic, who is wearing the sky blue uniform on the south end of Jeldwin Field here tonight. What did you think of Kosic's performance, Aiden, against Chicago? There was that mix-up with AJB. Aside from that, pretty good? I thought he was very solid. Made, made a Whoa! phenomenal. So, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you there, but Michael Nanchoff <laughs> just took out his coach 
at the ankles. <laughs> Manchoff slid. It's a rather slick surface because of the rain. <laughs> and he upended Porter. Porter went right over the top of him. Needham went in on <laughs> Nanchoff. Nanchoff went in on Porter. I'll tell you what, I have seen coaches suffer serious knee injuries on the corner of their technical area from plays like that, but it does look like Porter's okay. Anyway, back to Kosic, Aiden. What'd you think? Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was a very solid game for him, especially that one save he made in the in the first half where he tips it over the bar. It's, it's up for save of the week uh, this, this week. Uh, you know, the, the the free kick goal, nothing you can do. You cover your far post. It's your wall's job to cover that near post. And if he puts it where he puts it, you gotta get you got to applaud the guy because the one thing you don't want to do is get beat to that far post. Donovan Ricketts, of course, unavailable because he is with Jamaica. As they continue on in the hexagonal, their team is in dead last in that six-team group in World Cup qualifying. Lost to Honduras last night. Of course, the U.S. with a great 2-0 win over Panama in Seattle. This Timbers squad is watered down because of those international call-ups. Rodney Wallace with Costa Rica. He did not factor in the 0-0 draw in the Azteca against Mexico as Zizo and Alassane try to combine on the far side. And, of course, you've got Footy Danso. He's with his country, the Gambia. They'll be playing a friendly against Morocco in Venezuela. Ryan Johnson played the first hour for Jamaica. Long diagonal ball by Rafael Cox on a restart here for Tampa Bay. Controlled by Ryan Miller. Very bright start for Michael Nanchoff. Not only has he scored a great goal, he's getting a ton of touches. Cutting into the middle of the park. Really operating more as more of a playmaker than we've seen out of Valeri so far in this match. There's Diego, the Argentine, on cue. Into the feet of Nanchoff. Great ball wide to an on-rushing Zizo. Traps, heads up. Crosses right into the defender, Arango. Timbers recycle. Valeri, Alassane combined. Out wide to Nanchoff. Nanchoff was not expecting that pass, but gets there in time. Benz went in with a left foot over the top of Piquion, collected by Restrepo. 18th minute, 1-0 Timbers in this US, Co up Co U.S. Open Cup fourth round match. Early goal in this one from Michael Nanchoff, the 24-year-old Ohio product. Yeah, he's looked like a man on a mission here tonight. Full of energy, great first strike. Great idea there for ball into Piccione. Just misses him by a foot or two. Good control by Mulholland. Midfield on the near side. Pulls it back. Tampa Bay then goes direct through Stuart Campbell. Now it's back to Mulholland. Mulholland turns on Zemanski, goes down the line. That pass was intended for Ambersley. Cut out well by Miller. Miller drives forward. Piccione flicks on with the header. He came from an offside position about two or three yards in the attacking half. Mohan loses possession on the dribble up the near touch line. Valeri into the feet of Nanchoff. Looks for Piquion a little too much. Well read by Needham. Shane Hill curls one in, intended for Ambersley. Can't quite get the touch on it he'd like. Piquion was held back there by San Filippo, the Timbers Army. Always here in voice and numbers. Wanted a call, didn't get it. The rest of the stands at Geldwin Field, it must be said, are empty. But the Army cheering on this timber side from the north end of Geldwin Field. Zemanski chips a switch over the top to Valeri. He chests down, drops for Zizo. And the Timbers will switch the point of attack. Chip over the top from AJB to Ryan Miller. Miller squared to Zemanski. Pressed by Shane Hill. Into the feet of Nanchoff. Turns, curls one down the line beautifully for Trencito. 1v1 on Stuart Campbell. 
into the 18. Cuts to the inside. His shot is blocked by Campbell. Chested down. Zamanski should have one from here. He does. But he slices it, and it heads toward the log rather than the frame. Keith Blyer, Aiden Brown, and Fletcher Johnson at Geldwin Field. If you're listening on 750 The Game or watching the streaming broadcast on PortlandTimbers.com, great to have you with us. Good look at Caleb Porter in the online broadcast. He has, I don't think, been too happy with how deep the Timbers have been sitting at times in the first 20 minutes of this match. He keeps pushing them forward, waving that right arm. He wants 10 players, 11 players if he could, in the attacking half. That's why I, I like the option of Zalzizo at right back because he's so quick and, and his ability to get forward and get balls into the box is phenomenal. And to have that option out at right back is something that suits Caleb Porter's system quite nicely. That fits, fits that uh, spot on the field in this match like a glove. Zizo with touches. Comes square to Zemanski. Zemanski will meg the keeper. I mean the uh, referee, Elfath, to get the ball square to Miller. And now it's Nanchoff and Miller. One two-touch passing. And now Zemanski switches all the way over to Zizo. He traps. Takes a touch forward. Looks up. Piquion makes a run. Three-man combo. Piquion and Alassane. But it's well read by Cox. Cox will play one out to touch and a throw in here in the attacking third for the Timbers in the 22nd minute. Zemanski gets it back to Zizo. Zizo's heavy touch. He gets to it in time. Crosses. Restrepo goes with the very quick direct distribution. Jean Baptiste kind of tugged at Ambersley there. And so if there's been one mysterious no call by the referee on Tampa Bay, there's one on the Timbers, and it's amazing how all of those things seem to even out over the course of 90 minutes. Miller now midfield near side into Trencito. He's fouled by Stuart Campbell. Burgerville is offering a savory barbecue pulled pork sandwich for a limited time, made with all natural Neiman Ranch pork and topped with zesty cherry slaw. Burgerville, don't root hungry. Elfath will pull the ball back on Nanchoff a little bit. Midway through this first half, 1-0 Timbers. Golden Nanchoff will find out if Valencia gets an assist. He kind of got a bit of a, a half touch, as it were, right in the center of the 18, the ball bounced high and then was struck on the bounce strongly with the left foot of Nanchoff. Here's Trencito in the 18. Drops back on a 45 for Alassane who can't collect. Alassane wants that one back. Here comes Raphael Cox. Cox has a lot of pace. Plays it to Mulholland. He goes square to Arango. The outside back getting into an advanced position here for Tampa Bay. Savage with a touch. Shane Hill, coach's son. London product and a big boy <laughs> at the age of 25. Shane Hill is not your average looking center midfielder, is he? No, he's not. 6'1", 185 on the sheet. Then again, I was 6'5", 200 <laughs> on my sheet, which I was nowhere near. I think we're uh, we're safe in saying you both are uh, big men. Hill's father, Ricky, is the coach of this Tampa Bay side. Restart, chip forward by Needham, head down by Jean-Baptiste. And now it's Nanchoff, working the touchline. Nice little Kreif move. To catch Mulholland on his defensive effort. Now Jean-Baptiste, long diagonal, headed forward by Arango, down by Cox. Possession being shared fairly evenly in this match. Started with Tampa Bay. Timbers grab most of it back after the Nanchoff goal. And now Tampa Bay kind of growing in confidence again. But there's a horrible touch by Ristov. Gave it right to Alassane. Alassane, long diagonal ball into nothing. Piquion was checking back. Needham, direct play. McKenzie heads down. Zemanski collects, flips the hips, drives it forward. 
Needham now to Savage. Here's the former Timber on the dribble into the attacking third, out wide to Cox. Cox defended by Zizo, far corner. Back on the diagonal to Mulholland. Now Hill. Needham. Ristoff, the dangerous player for Tampa Bay, but has done nothing so far in this match. Hill, long diagonal. Cox, chest down on the back pedal. 1v1 on Zizo. Scissor move. Goes to the byline. Chips across. Miller has to chest down over the end line here on the near post. And that'll be a corner kick for Tampa Bay. Yeah, it has to be a little bit better communication there by the goalkeeper and the defender. He had absolutely no one behind him at all. There's got to be some sort of communication like time. Leave it. Uh, fortunately, it results in a corner kick here for Tampa Bay. Luke Mulholland, outswinger, top of the six. Jean-Baptiste tried to put a head on it. Instead, it's Cox from the corner of the 18. Not a bad shot, but it sails over the crossbar here in the 26th minute. Cox, as we mentioned, Tacoma, Washington native. Plenty of coaching being done by both men. Ricky Hill and Caleb Porter. Let's take a moment now for station identification. Keith Blyer, Aiden Brown, and Fletcher Johnson enjoying a match in the 100th Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Timbers hosting the Tampa Bay Rowdies and Portland leading 1-0 on a goal from Michael Nanchoff. Zizo and Alassane storming down the far touch line. Zizo last touched the ball. He was pressured by Orango, and it'll be a goal kick here for Restrepo and the Rowdies. Another crazy night in USOC play. Sporting Kansas City, the cup holders are out, having lost to Orlando City, 1-0. Chivas was beaten by Carolina. Charleston leading Real Salt Lake. And we now know who the winner of this match will play. How about FC Dallas? Another convincing win, this time over the Houston Dynamo. 3-0 the final in that match, so FC Dallas will host the winner of this match two weeks from tonight. Kenny Cooper with another great match. Yep, had the first two goals in that much match. Not sure who scored the third in that one for them. Nanchoff throws in in the attacking third, but drops it for Miller. Square pass to Valeri, pressured by Savage. Valeri comes square to Salzizo. He's got Alassane on a 45 drop, does it? Plays into the top of the arc and uh, Nanchoff, but that's well read by Mulholland. All he can do, however, is clear. And here comes another wave of pressure from the Portland Timbers. Rashawn McKenzie into the feet of Valencia. Turns. Alassane, his brain is moving too fast for his feet so far tonight. Gets a touch. Top of the 18. Shoots. Bends. That's really no problem for Restrepo. Our man Fletcher Johnson all over it. I wonder he provides. Zach Lloyd is the man uh, who scored the third goal tonight for FC Dallas in that 3-0 victory. An FC Dallas team that will be here on Saturday afternoon. Hill's long diagonal ball too much out there for Cox. Now Shane Hill's job as a center midfielder is, is really not a complicated one. He gets the ball and he looks long. Usually diagonally, but I haven't seen him make a pass of any shorter than 30 yards so far tonight. Approaching the half hour mark here at Jeldwin Field. 1 0 Timbers. This is just the third time in franchise history that the Timbers have reached the fourth round of the U.S. Open Cup, and it's been a while. They haven't been this far in eight years. We got to the fourth round in back-to-back -back years, 2004-2005. They have never been to the quarterfinals of this competition. Alassane sprays one square to Valencia. Here comes Ryan Miller on the overlap. Ambersley comes in strong and fast on 
Valencia. Karams to Nanchoff, now Miller. Now back to Trencito. And he'll go back to Rashawn McKenzie, one of the newest Timbers, the 26-year-old from Hartford, Connecticut. Started a number of matches for Chivas USA last year. Was acquired after Mikel Silvestre went down with a serious knee injury. Valeri to Alassan to Piquion. It gets kind of a half chance, leaning back, and it bounces into the arms of Restrepo. But Alassan is starting to work his way into the match after a slow and shaky start. And Valeri is getting more and more involved as well, and that is never good for the opponent. Ambersley square pass to Mulholland, who dribbles by Ryan Miller rather easily, gets into the corner of the 18. His cross is blocked by the back of Zemanski. And a foul on Ristov. I'll tell you, for, for being the man that we're supposed to look out for, and the number 10 for Tampa Bay, Georgie Ristov really hasn't done much after a half an hour, but perhaps he's one of those snipers that just kind of floats around Makes a couple bad passes, complains to the referee, and then ends up with two goals. Yeah, you, you got to love those players. Completely silent for 80 minutes, score a goal in 85th, and then they're the heroes after doing absolutely nothing. Well, he had the goal against the Seattle Sounders down in Florida a couple weeks ago, and he scored a goal in their third round victory over VSI Tampa Bay, the USL Pro side. That is how the Rowdies have gotten here. Alassane in the middle of the park, a little too much for Valeri. Chopped forward by San Filippo into the feet of Sal Zizo. Zizo to Demansky now. Jean Baptiste. Hard to believe Andrew Jean Baptiste is just 20 years old. Has the sculpted physique of somebody 28, 29 years old and is quickly earning his MLS stripes. Alassane dribbles by Hill into Piquion, but he's got three Rowdies defenders in front of him. Nice move to get by Campbell, then dribbles into a bit of a cul-de-sac and backs it back out. Zemanski square, square to Zizo. He'll drop for Andrew John Baptiste. Bends one around the near side for Ryan Miller. Caleb Porter has moved from the corner of his technical area to undercover, still standing however, not one to take a seat during a match. We've learned this much about the first year coach. Now this is the Timber style of soccer. We're used to seeing possession oriented, making the ball do the work. Timbers have made a tactical adjustment. They've had Alassan and Trencito switch sides. Alassan is now on the left flank underneath us. And Jose Valencia has slid over to the far side of the park. Goal kick, Timbers, uh, excuse me, uh, Rowdies. Key Bank is a proud founding sponsor of the Portland Timbers, along with 16 new Oregon branches in the last two years. The Timbers partnership is just one more example of Key Bank's involvement with our community. Visit key.com and go Timbers. AJB called for a foul and then gets a little bit of the finger wag from Elfath. Restart here for the Rowdies. 34th minute. 1-0. Portland. Temperatures in the mid-50s. Crazy, though. The weather in the Rose City. Rained all afternoon, and this game kicks off. Haven't seen a raindrop since, and the sun has decided to join us as well. Ambersley rises, tried to get over McKenzie. Ambersley is not great in the air, but was certainly brave on that attempt. And now here come the Timbers on a potential counterattack. Nanchoff into the attacking half. Wide side to Trencito. Drops it back for Nanchoff. Looks for the feet of Alisson, much too soft, and that's knocked away by San Filippo. Here's Georgi Ristov coming back into his defensive half to get a touch. Arango, San Filippo. Mohan, header back to Hill, who collects and then Gets one high in the air intended for Ambersley. That is not where you want to play Ambersley, the 30-year-old St. Louis man. As Ambersley 
as uh, Aiden Brown mentioned about Ambersley earlier in the broadcast, he's got a hat trick on his resume against the Timbers. Scored three in USL play back when the Timbers were a second division side. Headed forward by San Filippo. Ambersley stumbles. He had gotten beyond Rashawn McKenzie. But there to clean up is AJB. Did a nice job. Sends one down the touchline. Hill loose touch, but it was a fortuitous one into Mulholland. Now Hill cuts it back, intended for Campbell. Alassane wins it. Diagonal run by Piquion, but the ball is just a little too much from Alassane to throw in here for Tampa Bay. And that's a great recovery run by Jean Baptiste. McKenzie's caught a little bit too high while Jean Baptiste hasn't pushed up. Jean Baptiste is able to slide over, give him cover, and clear the ball. If you're wondering who uh, among the rest of the Timbers squad is in the 18 tonight, we will not be seeing Michael Harrington, nor Will Johnson. The seven players available to Caleb Porter in this one off the bench are Stevie Evans, the Portland native, Moby Fair. We do expect to see Jack Jewsbury tonight. Might even be a halftime substitution. Darlington Nagby's in the 18, and we'll probably see some time in the second half. Sebastian Rincon, the 19-year-old Colombian, is in the 18. And the second goalkeeper tonight is the uh, Kiwi, Jake Gleason. Throwing for the Timbers in the attacking half. They tried to find Savage, but he couldn't control. And Hill eventually ends up with it on the clearance by the Timbers. Andres Arengo in the center circle now for Tampa Bay. Arango originally from Columbia, but a member of the Canadian youth national teams over the last 12 or 13 years. Obviously, he's well beyond his youth now at the age of 30, but you can bet that Will Johnson knows who Andres Arango is. Zizo over the top. Trencito chasing it down, trying to get to it on the end line. He does, and it makes a nice move, but the ball does eventually go fully over the byline. Goal kick, Tampa Bay. In my opinion, I think Valencia is trying to do a little bit too much, being a little cheeky out there, out wide. When he's got two guys in the box, he needs to serve that ball in there as soon as he gets to it. He loves the ball. He wants to have fun with it. But I, I, I agree with you, Aiden. I think that's part of the, the maturation of little Trencito, the little train. His dad, of course, El Tren the original Jose Valencia, but yeah, he does a little bit too much on the ball at times and is still trying to read the match in a tactical fashion. And you look at the youth that's out there tonight in Valencia 21, John Baptiste 20, it's, it's easy to forget how young Khalif Alassane is. He's only 22. Yeah. Rashawn McKenzie, driven ball over the top of Piquion. Here in the 39th minute. Jack Jewsbury is already up and uh, warming up for the Timbers just below us. That will see him before the half, but he wants to be ready. Consummate professional Jack Jewsbury. And the older you get, the longer it takes for you to warm up as well. That's right. When I just have to run a coaching session for a U15 girls team on a Thursday, I, I go into a light jog on Tuesday morning. <laughs> And the knees still make squishing sounds. <laughs> Shane Hill, square pass, and a risky one from Marengo. Hill does a nice job of getting a touch on under the pressure of Nanchoff. And Nanchoff's been like the Energizer Bunny out there. Ex He's been excellent, everywhere. Excellent performance. A guy that's been dying to play. Yeah. That, that's what you see out there. Well, he leads the reserve team with four goals. So, so you think he'd get an opportunity, and, and he's really taken the most of it here tonight. Granted, there's a second half still to be played. And he's uh, out wide on the right at the moment. Valerius inserted himself into the middle of the park. Gets a touch forward from Zemanski. Heavy touch by Valeria, and that might be the first and last time I say that all year, <laughs> all year long. Heavy touch by Valeri. He is a technician, and it's very rare to see him make a loose touch like that. Lost it, and the Timbers, however, have won it back after the direct play from Tampa Bay. 
Here's Salzizo dribbling diagonally forward toward the center circle. Dispossessed from behind by Cox. 1-0 Timbers. Nanch off with the goal for Portland. Shane Hill drops one. Bit of a spec ball there. Mulholland couldn't get to it in time to control. Instead, just thumps it down the touch. Throw in here for Ryan Miller and the Timbers in front of Ricky Hill. I love what Caleb Porter's been able to do with Khalif al Hassan this year. This is a guy who maybe wasn't the most defensive player in the last couple of years. And, and Caleb Porter's really brought a sense of urgency in his defense this year. And, and that's fun to see, especially with a young, skilled player like Khalif al Hassan. Right on cue, Aiden. al Hassan attacking third near touchline. Tries to find Valeri. It ricochets into Diego's feet. And then Valeri loses control. Ball knocked away by Campbell. Whipped in by Ryan Miller. Actually, whipped is not the right uh, adjective. That ball was floated and far too much. Another goal kick for Restrepo. It hasn't been the sharpest of performances for the Timbers so far. We've seen some uh, some loose play, even by the likes of Valeri and, and Alassan, who are normally extremely tight with the ball. McKenzie heads forward after the kick by Restrepo. Now he's got a touch, a header back toward his goal, and Kosic, who has not been asked to do much at all thus far, left-footed clearance high into the air. Campbell sends one down the near touch line with his left foot. McKenzie, under the pressure of Mulholland, simply clears. Every time the Timbers score a goal this season, the club and Gerald Wynn will plant a tree in the Portland community through a partnership with Friends of Trees. Gerald Wynn, Windows and Doors, an official partner of the Portland Timbers. Well, at this point in the match, against the Wilmington Hammerheads in the third round of this U.S. Open Cup. It was 3-0. Tampa Bay is keeping themselves in this match. And here is Ristoff to Savage. Corner of the 18 drops from Mulholland. He'll cross it. Intended for Cox on the far side. Zizo gets a head in. Cox gets a touch, but there's a good defensive effort by Valencia. Tampa Bay, however, controls, and they're right back in the attacking half. Savage was not communicated to by his teammates, and Zemanski comes in from behind to take the ball away. Here's Valencia, the train, moving forward. Comes off the tracks, however, in the center circle. Mulholland is the man that hit the switch. Now, that is a is bad challenge. Going to pick up a caution and well-deserved. Georgie Ristoff comes in on Ryan Miller from behind and late. And there is the first yellow card of this match in the 43rd minute. Ay, ay, ay. That was on the borderline of yellow and red, if you ask me. Yeah, Ryan Miller was lucky he didn't have that right foot planted in the turf. If that happens, who knows what type of injury could have occurred. It really wasn't from behind. I should correct that part of it, but it was... Reckless and late. Here's Nanchoff. Delicious little outside of the foot chip for Piquion, but he was offside. You heard the whistle. So it will be very interesting to see how the Timbers do things over the next 12 days, Aiden, because they are uh, right in the thick of it now. Four matches over the next 12 days, and should they win this one this evening, it's going to be 5 in 15. Mm -hmm. They've got FC Dallas on Saturday afternoon here at Gerald Winfield. Then they're at the Galaxy, the Home Depot Center, a week from tonight. Then it's hosting the Rapids of Colorado on Sunday the 23rd. And like I said, if they win this, they've got another one in midweek. And it would be at FC Dallas in the U.S. Open Cup quarterfinals. So we're going to see some serious squad rotation, aren't we? Yeah, I, I would think so. And I think Caleb Porter and the coaching staff down there have done a great job. You know, they, they've dealt with four serious injuries. Two center backs gone, David Horst, Mikhail Silvestre, Bright DK, who was supposed to be one of the top forwards this year. They're out with him. But yet 
they still have guys come in competing and competing well. Footy comes in, does a great job. You have Rodney Wallace, his breakout year. Mulholland sends a restart into the 18. Ball headed down, bounces once. Zemanski, and then the quick clearance out by Nanchoff. Heavy pressure from Valeri makes it difficult for Stuart Campbell. Do we have two yellows in two minutes here? Foul there by Jay Needham on Zemanski. And Elfath is indeed going to pull out the card on Needham. It's for persistent infringement. Anytime you see a referee pointing at three different spots on the field and talking to a player, he's saying you fouled here, there, and over there, and I'm not going to put up with it anymore. So the 45 minutes are gone. We are in injury time here in the first half at Jeldwin Field. Portland Timbers won. Tampa Bay Rowdies nil. Fourth round, Lamar Hunt, U.S. Open Cup. Mulholland combining with Ambersley. Then they go in for Ristov. He can't get to it, and that'll do it. The first half of this one is history. Caleb Porter, never totally content. I always like to look down and see what he's doing as he walks his way toward the Timbers locker room. A rather animated conversation with Sean McCauley, his assistant, about pushing the line, getting players forward. But they've been attacking enough to get a goal, and a brilliant goal out of Michael Nanchoff. It's 1-0 at the break. Fletcher Johnson will have the halftime show during this U.S. Open Cup match on 7.50 the game after this.
Valencia. Awkward touch. Great shot. Since 1960, when Jell-O began with one hiring and well work plan, we've been dedicated to crafting Rado windows and doors. Today you can see touch and feel of liability in our beautiful windows and doors because of their durability, energy efficiency, and worry-free performance. We measure our success by the relationships we've built with our customers, suppliers, and communities where we live and work. We have partnered with organizations such as the Green Building Initiative, which accelerates green building practices by promoting the environment. It's time for our Providence first half. Rap Timbers leading the Rowdies 1-0 here at the break. Aiden, uh, what were some of your general thoughts taken out of that first half between these two sides? Well, I think the Timbers came out a little bit flat. Uh, I think uh, Tampa Bay did a nice job of kind of taking it to them in the first five to ten minutes. Uh, I think Keith Savage had a lot of space. Uh, I think he was a bit too unselfish uh, by not taking a few shots because he had a couple opportunities on his left foot about 20, 25 yards out to unleash a left foot a shot. He can hit him with his left. I've seen it before. Uh, I think that's a bit un uh, unselfish of him. 
I think he needs to be more selfish, take a little bit more of the ball. We also talked about this being an opportunity for certain Timbers players to really step up like Freddie Picciolo did in the match against Wilmington. Uh, anybody individually stick out to you in that first half? Yeah, obviously. Michael Nanshaw. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it wasn't even close. I mean, first of all, what a strike. What a goal. Uh, and then secondly, he was all over that field. He, he was making tackles, breaking up plays. He wasn't even tackling his own coach. <laughs> <laughs> With all that being said, just a one-goal lead, and yep. this is a Tampa Bay side that showed some flashes of being able to get some possession and, and put in some dangerous chances. Yeah, and, and Caleb talked about the Chicago game where they gave up that two-goal lead and, and, and tied 2-2, two -two, and he said, you know, hopefully this is a learning experience for us. We didn't uh, lose you know, all our points. We, we still got a point out of it. If we're able to learn our lesson and only lose two points, I think we can move forward. Hopefully they've learned that lesson and can push forward and keep it at least a shutout or score a few more. That's your Providence First Half Wrap with our radio analyst Aiden Brown. Up next, we will have second half action here at Gerald Wind Field with Keith Blyer and Aiden Brown between the Portland Timbers and Tampa Bay Rowdies. We'll have a half-hour post-game show following this one. You'll hear from Timbers head coach Caleb Porter get his reaction after what will hopefully be a Portland Timbers win. Can Portland advance further than they ever have in their history in the U.S. Open Cup? We'll find out in the next 45 minutes. That comes your way next here on 750 the game. That far in this competition, but it is a tenuous 1-0 lead over the Tampa Bay Rowdies out of the NASL, the North American Soccer League, the team that knocked off the Seattle Sounders to come here to Geld Wen Field and take on another Major League Soccer side from the Pacific Northwest. Nice little moment at midfield as Amos McGee gives a Firm handshake to Tampa Bay Rowdy Keith Savage, who played, of course, with this Portland Timbers team when they were in the USL. And then McGee walks to Jack Jewsbury at midfield and gives him some tactical advice as they look over a piece of paper. Jewsbury is your Fleer player substitution at halftime. As expected, Fletcher Johnson clued us in on this after discussing it with Caleb Porter this afternoon. Diego Valeri is just going to go 45 minutes in this match tonight. So Valeri out and Jack Jewsbury on. 
Jewsbury slides that captain's armband on, and Aiden, it fits nicely, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. And, and you got to feel for the guy because he was coming into the season, going to be the captain. And first or second game in preseason down in Arizona, he pulls his hamstring, and he pe- pulls at something fierce. And so Will Johnson wasn't afraid to step up, and he has done a very nice job replacing Jack Jewsbury. That doesn't mean Jack has taken over or, or lost any of his leadership abilities because he still has that calmness about him, that lead-by-example mentality. And, and, and for me, a player who goes through that experience and still says to his coach, play me wherever you want to, whenever you want to, is almost more important to a team in the message that it sends uh, than just putting the captain's armband on. There was an early miscommunication between Rashawn McKenzie and Jean-Baptiste here as the whistle is blown and the second half has begun. It didn't uh, do much damage. A goal kick is driven forward by Kosic of the Timbers as Portland heads south now at Geldwin Field, away from the Army. Jean-Baptiste takes a drop from Zizo. They go all the way back to Kosic. Under some pressure from Ambersley. Drives the ball forward, collected nicely by Nanchoff. There's a bad diagonal, picked off by Ambersley. Keith Savage now has it for Tampa Bay. To Cox, back to Hill. Hill one-touch pass. And he's been on a different page from his teammates at many times this match. Look how animated and upset, quite frankly, Caleb Porter is with the start to this half out of his team. Very rarely do you see him out and out scream at his players. He just did there. McKenzie just drives one forward. Shaky start for the Timbers. And to be fair, they didn't start the first half all that well either. But they do have a 1-0 lead on a ninth-minute goal from Nanchoff. Zizo takes the ball away from Ristoff, who's been highly ineffective in this match despite a team-high seven goals for Tampa Bay so far this season. Restrepo plays the ball out wide to his right back. Stewart Campbell then gets it back. Low driven ball, past Savage. Good touch by Zemanski out of the air to Jewsbury, who gets his first touch of the, the evening. Tampa Bay wins it back at midfield, and it glances off Jewsbury. Throwing on the far side here for the Rowdies. Your under head coach, Ricky Hill, we've mentioned his name a couple times. It's a gentleman that is a lifelong footballer. He played for 13 years with Luton Town, scored 54 goals for them. This is his third season in charge of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. He's coached in Trinidad and Tobago. His son, Shane Hill, is the big man in the middle of the park for Tampa Bay tonight. Ricky Hill has three caps for England as well and comes in very confident. He said, we will suffer no inferiority complex entering this match. There has to be a winner. And we don't mind being the winner. But they're chasing this match at the moment. Looks like possibly Caleb made a tactical change as well. Started the first half with an inverted diamond with only one withholding midfielder in Ben Zemanski. Looks like Jewsbury's kind of dropped in. Going with two withholding midfielders. Having Nanshoff be that, that playmaker there in the middle for him. Makes sense to me. Those are the kind of players all three of those gentlemen are certainly in this match this evening Nanchoff has been the playmaker it's a foul on Valencia I think he uh, got the back of Arango's head there if for any reason this game is tied after 90 minutes we've got to find a winner this evening as Ricky Hill says there, there's got to be somebody that walks away from this one victorious We would play two full 15-minute extra time periods. If we're still all square, we'd go to a penalty kick shootout. Little handball by Nanchoff in the middle of the park, missed by the referee. Savage collects anyway. Tampa Bay, nice little cut to the left side by Arango. Packs to Cox is picked off, and then Zemanski's pass is picked off by Savage. The ball's moving around very quickly now here. In the first five minutes of this second half. Long diagonal ball from Needham over the top of Ristov. Zizo heads forward. Now Zemanski square to Jewsbury. Jewsbury to Alassane. And here comes Ryan Miller on the overlap. 
Alassane will go direct and hit it too far out in front of Piquion. I don't think uh, the Ghanaian's very pleased with his effort so far this evening. Alassane has, has, I think, missed as many passes as he's connected. But he's doing a job defensively. Brings the ball down here. Has it knocked away by Savage. Jewsbury gets a touch. And then Alassane to Zemanski, who just chops one over the far touch line. This is not the Timbers at their best. I think it's fair to say. It really isn't. I, I think they need to get a little wider and move that ball a little bit quicker. Make sure Zizo comes out wide. Gives them an option to switch the ball, switch the point of attack. Valencia has got to be a little bit more active on that right side. We saw against Chicago how Darlington Nagby at times drifted inside, allowing the outside backs to come forward. Giving the ball away a lot on some of these direct passes, some of the Route 1 stuff. Timbers were known early in the season for really keeping the ball, keeping it, keeping it, keeping it. And they got away from the possession game a little bit because they were interested in winning soccer matches. Uh, you know, they've, they've only lost one time in the last 95 days. That's impressive. But it, it, it's, um, it may behoove them to just kind of keep the ball a little bit more in the midfield. These long balls from Alassane and Zemanski and even AJB at times have not exactly paid off. And look at here, the Timbers. A little tiki-taka at the top of the 18 for the visiting side from the NASL level. Shane Hill chips in for Ristoff. Left-footed volley cleared by Zizo. Valencia's taken down from behind by Arango. Savage has a shot inside the 18. It deflects off Zemanski. Kosic reads well, comes out, and puts an end to that attack out of the visitors. Yeah, great reaction time by Kosic. Comes off his line nice and quick, collects the ball, lets his team settle down a bit. That's Aiden Brown. I'm Keith Blyer. High above Jeldwin Field on a Wednesday evening. 100th, Lamar Hutt, U.S. Open Cup. Fourth round, winner advances to the quarterfinals. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast as you make your way around Portland on 7.50 the game. It is 1-0, Timbers. Ninth minute goal from Michael Nanchoff. Timbers have been a bit ragged at times, haven't played enough in the attacking half for Coach Porter's liking, at least by the body language I'm reading from up here. And uh, this match hangs in the balance. There's no question. Throw in far side midfield for Ryan Miller into the feet of Nanchoff. He's dispossessed. And here's Ambersley shielding from Miller. Triple teamed a little bit over there, and Alassane comes away with it. Alassane dribbles, splits a double team into the attacking third. It's a three on two. Alassane bends one, not enough pace, diving to his left and making the save is Restrepo. Match came to life there for a moment. Yeah, great individual skill by Khalif Alassane. Able to take a touch. A little bit too long, but it works for him because he's able to squeeze through two defenders. He's got two options on the outside besides to go alone. Numerical superiority, a pass probably would have worked out. Alassane tried to bend one, just did not put enough pace on it. Arango drops to his keeper, Restrepo, who drives forward. Zemanski's volley is handed down by Hill. The referee, Elfath, says play on due to advantage, and now Valencia is chopped down in the attacking half. Quickly grabs his right leg and foot, but jumps up and is fine. So here's a restart for the Timbers in the 54th minute. Looks like Nanchoff alone, about 40 yards from goal straight away. Timbers will hold their line of defense outside the 18. Zemanski doesn't care. He'll set up in an offside position to start this one. Two-man wall for Tampa Bay. Nanchoff, left foot, floats one into the 18. Headed down and across by Piquion, and there's Jack Jewsbury. Goal, Timbers! The second half substitute and the former captain. Takes just over eight minutes to score and put the Timbers in charge. Two nothing. Great floated ball to the Timbers' main guy in the air, Frederick Piccione. He heads it back across. 
And Jack Jewsbury making a run from the middle of the field. Is able to tow that right in the back of the net. Nothing Restrepo can do at all. And he beat the former timber, Keith Savage, to the ball. Savage switched off for a moment. Jewsbury got around his back shoulder. Took it pretty much on the, the half volley, leaning back. Sent it high into the far corner of the net. And Jack Jewsbury has scored a very important goal in this match. Huge goal. Tampa Bay was knocking on the door a few times there. And this goal definitely relieved some of that pressure, although it's not over yet. They, they still have a good solid 25, 35 minutes that they have to go. Not a time to let down if you're the Timbers. And this is psychologically, a lot of people say in soccer, the most dangerous lead, this 2-0 advantage. You feel like you're now fully in charge of the match. Perhaps you exhale just a little bit too much. We shall see. Breaking the action for our second Fleer player substitution of the evening. Frederick Piquion, the man who scored four goals in the last U.S. Open Cup match and just got a nice assist there on the header down to Jack Jewsbury. Exits in favor of Darlington Nagby. Nagby comes on and will probably play more of a wider position. And it looks as if they'll put Valencia at the top of the attack, but we'll see what Porter and his technical staff have decided. We're back underway here. 2-0, Portland Timbers, 57th minute. Nanchoff early in the first half, Jack Jewsbury early in the second half. Alassan spins by his defender, Arango, but his pass is not good enough. And Valencia probably not mobile enough to get to that pass either. Foul on Ambersley, and here come the Timbers. Now a third goal just might put this match to bed. Nanchoff goes square, out to Ryan Miller. Miller drops for Jewsbury. If I'm not mistaken, the crowd just decided to get louder as Jewsbury touched the ball. He is such a fan favorite here. So respected. And the man who's got the second goal in this match. Yeah, the inaugural season for the Portland Timbers was by far Jack Jewsbury's best year as a professional. Named a 2011 MLS All-Star. Was just a consummate leader for that team. Ambersley fouled McKenzie at midfield. Here comes Sal Zizo zipping up the near touchline. Bends one in beyond Alassane, headed or knocked clear by San Filippo. Zemanski switches to Ryan Miller. Oh, that was a nice touch out there by Miller. That ball was coming in hot. He was fully stretched to control. Jewsbury's pass back to Miller is intercepted by Mulholland. Here comes Raphael Cox, the Tacoma kid. Savage, nice little touch square to keep it away from Zemanski. Tampa Bay has shown they can knock the ball around. Got their respect as a footballing side just really haven't threatened Kosic at all. I mean, he hasn't been asked to make many saves. They've got at least half the possession, I, I would think. Savage tries to go back to Cox here in the near corner. Nice job by Zizo to deflect the ball off Cox for a Timbers goal kick. Now you're definitely starting to see the, the skill and ability Savage has on the ball in tight spaces. 76 is a proud partner of the Portland Timbers, and now they're celebrating by giving away two free tickets to a Timbers Reserves match every time you fill up with 10 gallons or more. So fuel up, redeem your tickets, and enjoy the game. Learn more at 76.com forward slash Timbers. Approaching the hour mark now. Here at Jeldwin Field, a rainy afternoon has given way to a dry, if not chilly, evening. Jewsbury sliding tackle on Aristov, but it's out to Cox here on the near touchline. 
Square to Mulholland, does a good job of switching the point of attack and playing 360 degrees. Goes out wide to Campbell, Campbell back into Hill. Hill looks up, can't find a target, drops it back in frustration to Needham. Needham's pass is picked off by the Timbers. Nagby, who has just come on, gets a chest and a pass back. And now it's Alassane from Jean-Baptiste into Nanchoff, dribbling right into the heart of the, or probably should have dribbled, instead pass to Valencia. And that was well read by Campbell out there on the right side, Tampa Bay. Rowdies have absolutely no players up and warming up. No substitutions seem imminent at all. Tampa Bay probably a much thinner squad than are the Timbers. Nice ball forward from Zemanski into Valencia. Valencia, one on two in the 18. First working on San Filippo, and San Filippo stands strong. Knocks that one out over the near touchline. I think for me, Valencia had it there on his left foot. You know, he's got a much better angle going at goal from, the, from that further inside. But he decides to cut it back to his favorite right foot. Just, I just think it's maybe one touch too much for him here tonight. He'll learn. Yeah, he'll he's, learn. he's young. Yeah, he'll learn here and apply it at that highest level. Here's Cox spinning, driving one down the touchline for Tampa Bay. Playing into Ambersley's head is just not a good idea for Tampa Bay. Ambersley has got not much of a frame on him. He's a talented little, little soccer player, but John Baptiste is just owning him in the air. You can tell he's shaking his head in frustration, the number 15 for the Rowdies. Well, if you were thinking there would be yet another upset tonight in the U.S. Open Cup, it's not going to happen in the Real Salt Lake and Charleston Battery game. That game went to extra time. The extra 30-minute session tied at 2, Aiden. And Real Salt Lake scored three times in the extra 30 minutes. Devin Sandoval in the 97th, Kari Stevenson in the 105th minute, and then Javier Morales in the 108th, and it ended 5-2. Wow. So RSL advances to the quarterfinals. And they are, it's, it's far too early to project this, but they are a likely opponent in the semifinals for the winner of the next match on this side of the bracket. In other words, should the Timbers hang on to this and beat FC Dallas in two weeks, they most likely would face Real Salt Lake, but upsets happen, as they have already tonight. Orlando City over Sporting KC. Here comes Ryan Miller on a pass from Nanchoff. Great drop to Nagby. Drag touch shoots outside netting. Tell you what, that run from Ryan Miller started that entire thing. And Nagby does a great job. Kind of starts his run and then backs off. Ryan Miller sees him out of the corner of his eye. Nagby tries to cut it back just, doesn't get enough on that left foot. Goes out for a goal kick. I love that pass from Miller, too. Yeah. Well, it, it wouldn't happen if, I, if not for the run of Darlington Nagby because he makes that run near post and then drops Checks back. Right The rest of the uh, Timbers reserves are up and moving with purpose. And Tampa Bay has sent their reserves over to the corner of Gerald Winfield to warm up. We are in the uh, 64th minute here in the Rose City of Portland, Oregon. I'm Keith Blyer along with Aiden Brown, and it is 2-0 Timbers in this fourth round U.S. Open Cup match. Goals from Michael Nanchoff and Jack Jewsbury. Bad giveaway at midfield by Alassane. Square to Cox, now to Ambersley, who's got the ball at his feet. Much better for him. Mulholland takes it square from Ambersley. Nice little ball to the far corner, and Stuart Campbell crosses one in over the top of Ristoff, headed away by Zizo. Alassane, now there's a great touch by Khalif, who's had a, a bit of an off night. Gets it into Valencia. Now Nagby dribbling forward, wider to Nanchoff. We've got a four on three here. Tampa Bay quickly gets men back. Nagby, corner of the 18, back to Nanchoff. Drops for Zemanski, who lets it go for Jewsbury. Timbers will take their foot off the pedal here. 
Miller will drop it all the way back to Rashawn McKenzie. Valuable night for McKenzie. Probably will go the full 90 in this one. One of the newer Timbers, as we've mentioned. Nice ball from AJB into Valencia. And boy, the Tampa Bay mutiny, excuse me, Tampa Bay, that is a flashback, huh? Tampa Bay Rowdies are uh, showing a little fatigue now. They've done a lot of chasing here, and a lot of space is opening up. Well, you mentioned the Tampa Bay Mutiny. I age myself. Perry Vanderbeck is the technical director who was the head coach at the end of the season, the season that the Tampa Bay Mutiny folded along with the Miami Fusion back in 2001. 2002, depending yeah. on how you look at but it. They, they, they went out both in the same year. Is that correct? That's, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Tampa Bay and, uh, and I, Miami. And I, I was a part of that Tampa Bay team, and, and that, was, that was an interesting process to go through. Yeah. It really is uh, a bit surprising that there is no Major League Soccer side in Florida. Mm -hmm. Orlando has been pushing very hard to get one. They lost out most recently to... NYC FC. That'll be the newest Major League Soccer side. They've already made a big hire. Claudio Reyna has left U.S. Soccer to be the technical director. Here's a three-on-three. -three. Timbers are just kind of having fun now. It's almost like a small-sided game. All Hassan working on Cox. Steps over. Crosses over the head of Valencia. And cleared out by Stuart Campbell. We're going back to Perry Vanderbeck. When I sort of doing my research on this Tampa Bay side. I was pleased to see his name. I watched him play so many years in the North American Soccer League. He was a part of that Team America in NASL when the U.S. national team basically played a full NASL season as Team America with Ricky Davis and company. Barry Vanderbeck was also the captain of the 1980 Olympic team. He's the technical director and vice president now of Tampa Bay. And the uh, Rowdies have made their first substitution here. Raphael Cox has come off as a corner kick is sent in here by Nanchoff, headed down by Jean-Baptiste. Bit of a whiff by McKenzie at the corner of the six, and Mulholland clears. Ryan Miller gets a header at midfield. So the Fleer player substitution for Tampa Bay is Cox off, and Imani Walker comes on. Nanchoff, square to Valencia, uh, Alassane, excuse me. His shot is blocked by Arango. Walker's a 23-year-old out of San Diego. Get the long hair and the, uh, the ponytail, and he'll play up top here for Tampa Bay in the final half of the second half. Nagby. Diagonal to Alassane, little back heel, back to Nagby. Valencia now inside the 18, shoots, great save down to his right by Restrepo, and then swept away by Stuart Campbell. Huge save by Restrepo. That, that goal would have taken Tampa Bay, in my opinion, out of it. Big time save, has to go low and down to his right, and Valencia does a great job, takes that extra touch, which is gets him in that great position. Low, hard Ooh. shot to that far right post. That was going in. That was. Would have been 3-0 Timbers. It's really interesting how after this uh, after this second game, our second goal, excuse me, things have really opened up. Seems to be three on three in the Tampa Bay end. They're obviously throwing everything they can at the Timbers. Winner advances. Loser is out of this competition. Sixty ninth minute. Two nothing Portland. Goal kick here for uh, Milos Kosic. Yugoslavia, who played college soccer. Loyal in Maryland, most recently with Toronto FC. Reliable backup to Donovan Ricketts, who's currently with the Jamaican national team. Kosic will be the starter, I think, on Saturday against FC Dallas. I don't believe uh, Ricketts is back by Saturday. It's 
Speaking of international duty, how about that U.S. game yesterday? It looked good. It did. I didn't. Uh, I saw the first 45 in its entirety, and then just brief glimpses of the second half. But it's nice to see Josie Altidore coming good. Sitting on top of the group in the hex. Nanchoff out wide to Ryan Miller. Miller pulls one back on his right foot, instead drops to Valencia. Tampa Bay has put nine players in the back third now. Zizo chips one in, he's got Valencia header. He does score, but was offside. Pretty look from Zizo. Nice finish from Valencia. But the flag goes up here on the near side. It remains 2-0, Portland Timbers. Yeah, great look there by Sal Zizo. Just a step or two off sides from Valencia. Zemanski dispossessed by Savage who shoots. Kosic down to his left. Portland timber of the past. Nearly scored again at the old PGE Park. Yeah, he had a couple of those chances in the first half but didn't pull the trigger, decided to go out wide with it. Wondering why. Header in the center circle by Zemanski, but to Shane Hill. Shane Hill drops for Needham. Needham drives forward. Zizo one touch down the touch line to Alassane. He's got two rowdies on him. His touch was loose, knocked away by Savage. Zizo cannot keep it inbounds. Be a throw in here by the middle strike for Tampa Bay. Savage square to Ristov. Ristov drops from Mulholland. Might have been an unintentional drop pass by Ristov, who, for being Tampa Bay's leading scorer, has shown zip here this evening. Nagby to Valencia, working one-on-one -on, -one on Needham. Can he get around him? Shoots and sliding to his left to make the save is Restrepo. That was actually San Filippo that was the defender there in the 1v1 situation. That all right there was created by that phenomenal turn by Darlington Nagby. He's able to hold the defender off, turn on the ball, play Valencia in. Great turn by Darlington Nagby. A little bit of a tired touch out there on the far side by Nanchoff. His run is socks off this evening. Fletcher Johnson has uh, helped me with the information regarding the national team duty for the Timbers. Rodney Wallace for Costa Rica and Footy for the Gambia will be out of order this weekend for the Timbers. They'll still be with their Costa Rican and Gambian national teams, but Ricketts and Johnson will be back in town. They'll be done with this recent cycle for Jamaica. It'll just depend on how tired they are, whether or not they get the call on Saturday in a huge match against FC Dallas. Because for as good as the Timbers have been this season, Aiden, as Tampa Bay has a throw in in their back half on the near touch line, and then they go direct, intended for Imani Walker. I don't think a Walker's even gotten a touch yet in this match. Ryan Miller brings the ball around Walker and up the far touch line. We talked quite a bit about the Timbers' unbeaten run, 12 in Major League Soccer. Record, by the way, is owned by FC Dallas, 19 consecutive matches in Major League Soccer without a loss a couple of years ago for FC Dallas. But there are one too many draws on that ledger for the Timbers. They can't seem to catch up to FC Dallas because of those one-point results rather than the three points. Well, you know the classic six-pointer that they talk about okay. in soccer? We got a six-pointer coming Saturday afternoon, don't we? Yeah, uh, that's right. And, and also, I mean, there could be a couple losses in there. I mean, you look at uh, the 2 0 result in Colorado that they come back for and tie 2 2. You look at Seattle going down a goal. Uh, you know, I think this is a team, you know, they could have lost a few as well. So they've shown resilience in, in coming back for games, but they's, they've also, you know, especially Chicago, given up a few points. But as Cater, Caleb Porter said, it's a learning experience. Speaking of a learning experience, we've got one coming up for a young man out of Portland, Oregon. This will be a fantastic moment for the Portland Timbers. And Stevie Evans, he will be the third and final substitution of the night. Now we talk about homegrown products. This kid 
Stevie Evans, University of Portland pilot. Yep. Portland, Oregon is his hometown. And he's about to make his professional debut at the top level for this Portland Timbers franchise. Young kid with a lot of talent, a lot of promise, a lot of type of players on this team just like that. Just 21 years old, here comes Steven Evans. He'll play the final quarter of an hour. Warm moment between Caleb Porter and Khalif al -Hassan. Be interested to hear what Porter said to al -Hassan there. al -Hassan was far from his best tonight. Put in a shift. Got up and down. Played box to box, but didn't make a ton happen, and his touch was clearly off. That happens. I mean, even to the best players in the world, it happens. Well, he did get a little bit better uh, in the second half, but I, I think his touch wasn't where it normally is. It's been tough for him. I mean, he's he saw a lot of playing time early this season and then kind of faded out of the picture, at least uh, in terms of the, the first 11 selection for Porter. A lot of pressure on these professionals. Here's your chance. Now go be perfect. <laughs> it's just not, not possible. Stevie Evans comes hard and fast there at Arango. Dives in a little bit. Slides to try to pick off a pass from San Filippo instead of Zizo in the back third, dropping to Kosic. One touch clearance. Shane Hill heads forward, collected by Jack Jewsbury. Ryan Miller out wide, and this game has really slowed down quite a bit. Miller chips over the top for Valencia. Timbers lead 2 0 appear to be, appear to be bound for the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open Cup. Valencia drops one, picked off by Shane Hill. That was intended for Nagby. Now Rango, good look to Ambersley who checks back. Square one touch pass to Savage. Back to Ambersley. Kid who scored a hat trick against the Timbers at the USL level, Ambersley. Now 30 years old. Here's Campbell. Man who played eight years with the Bristol Rovers. These are good soccer players out here for the second division side. Hill over the top. Wow. Tough decision by McKenzie. That nearly let Walker in free and clear, but he couldn't quite find the ball over his shoulder. What a great recovery. I mean, he was able to make up ground on that. I don't know how and get his foot around without causing a foul to clear that ball. Otherwise, Walker would have had a wide open shot one on one with Kosich there. Jewsbury commits a foul that the Timbers Army did not see. Here's a dangerous restart. I mean, this match is not gone. You pull one back, it's game on. Here is uh, Mulholland standing over the ball, 25 yards from the Timbers' goal. Just shaded to the right, but not by much. A five-man, no, make that six-man wall for the Timbers. Mulholland bends off the crossbar. To Kosic is right. Nice strike by Mulholland. The Brit out of Preston, England, nearly made it 2-1. Walker, great chest pass over the top for Ambersley. Zemanski just chops one away out of the 18. Nervy moments these for the Portland Timbers. And now it's Ristoff taking a loose pass away from Jewsbury. <laughs> Boy, I am just completely mystified by Georgie Ristoff. He was the talisman coming in this one for Tampa Bay. And uh, there have been times when he looks like a Sunday afternoon player. That touch just right off his foot and over the sideline. All right, here's Savage. Drops it back over the top of Stevie Evans. How about this? Stevie Evans dispossesses Andres Arango. Evans dribbling, dribbling forward, tries to bend one over the top for Valencia, but it was low and headed away by San Filippo. Yeah, not a bad idea at all. Just the execution was not there on that final ball. Didn't hit it strong nor high enough. Ristoff, there's a nice little header square. 
And the man that uh, I've been a bit critical of this evening, for sure, Arango to Hill. Hill looks one touch into Ambersley. S sliding intervention by Jewsbury. Arango sliding pass attempted and picked off by Zemanski. Evans tries to go into the feet of Nagby, doesn't quite get there, but it eventually bounces to the feet of Nagby. And he'll switch the point out to the far side. Nanchoff has got Miller on the overlap. Ryan Miller still running hard from that wide back position. Miller gets the ball from Jewsbury. We're in the final 10 minutes now with the Portland Timbers leading the Tampa Bay Rowdies 2-0. Ninth minute goal from Michael Nanchoff and a goal about eight minutes into the second half from Jack Jewsbury on a header down from Piquion. You know, we haven't mentioned Zemanski's name too often, but I think he's had a very quiet, solid game at defensive mid here tonight. Kind of occupying that Diego Char role. Yeah. Quietly productive. Does all the things that don't show up on YouTube. That's kind of the way I put it. But so important to the side. I wonder, I wonder if Nanchoff will get an assist on that uh, second goal. He's the one that served it in on the restart. Pikion headed down and Jewsbury scored. If so, Nanchoff's got a goal and an assist this evening. 81 minutes gone. Zizo and Zemanski playing pass here in the middle of the park. Now Jewsbury gets involved in the fun. Back to Zizo. He'll bend one or chip one down the near touch line. Evans in pursuit. San Filippo drops back to his keeper, Restrepo. Restrepo won a national championship with the University of Virginia a few years back. You can hear the Army singing their Please Don't Take My Sunshine Away song, as they do late in just about every match. Mulholland with a touch out over the sideline here at the mid stripe on the near side and Zizo will throw it in for Portland. Savage, bad pass, picked off by Nagby. Nagby curls one into the feet of Valencia. Valencia can't control and Savage comes away. Great pass here from Mulholland into Imani Walker. Here's a one-on-one. -on -one. Walker against Rashawn McKenzie. Drifts wider, plays it in. Ambersley has a look. Sliding tackle by Jean-Baptiste. Pops the ball straight up into the air for Kosic. If you're playing with a two-goal lead, you never want to get caught two versus two in the back, which is what just happened right there. You always want that one of those outside backs tucked in, giving you cover. That being said, Andre Jean Baptiste did a great job to stick with his runner and clear the ball. AJB drives one forward, headed down and back to his keeper by Jay Needham. Needham played his college soccer at SMU and then went and spent two years in Norway. Aiden, you familiar with the Alta IF? Yep. Team in Norway, that's where uh, Needham was. In the Deca Liga. First division side. Or they were, at least. Our Norwegian soccer expert, Aiden <laughs> Brown. <laughs> Wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Header back by San Filippo after the overhead kick by Nagby. Restrepo will punt forward. Out to the far side here in the 84th minute with the Timbers leading. 2-0. Jewsbury spins in the back half, plays square to Stevie Evans. Evans collects, he's got some space to dribble. Here comes the former Portland pilot. Wow, that pass a bit hot out wide to Zizo. Zizo collects, gets it back to Steve Evans, and then plays it forward into the feet of uh, San Filippo in Tampa Bay. Nice passing triangles in midfield out of the visitors. Down the line. Aranga for Ristoff. Too much. That one was spinning out of bounds. This is the 100th edition of the U.S. Open Cup, one of the oldest domestic soccer competitions in the history of the world. Only competitions like the FA Cup and the Copa del Rey, the domestic competition in Holland, 
I believe in Portugal are older than the U.S. Open Cup, but that's about it. Sporting Kansas City, current cup holders, but they will be surrendering the trophy, and this ball from Jewsbury finds an offside Darlington Nagby. KC knocked off tonight by Orlando City. There's the shock result. Prior to Kansas City winning last year, from 2009 to 2011, it was all Seattle Sounders. Wouldn't it be nice for the Timbers to take those bragging rights away? And lift the cup in 2013. It most likely will be an MLS side that wins the U.S. Open Cup. I mean, never say never, but the last team to win the U.S. Open Cup not out of MLS are the Rochester Raging Rhinos. That was in 1999. Tampa Bay still passing the ball very well. Mulholland square to Savage. Savage foul from behind there. Jewsbury, I believe, might have been Stevie Evans. Nanchoff did get an assist on the second Timbers goal. Nice night for him having not played much at all for the A-side, if you will. Leading scorer for the reserves, Michael Nanchoff. Caleb Porter knows he can do a job. He did a job for him, I'm sure, year after year in Akron, Ohio. And they were both part of that college program that had so much success. Here's a restart for Luke Mulholland, just in front of the Timbers bench. Not before Elfath blows the whistle and has a word or two with a couple players who are auditioning for Dancing with the Stars over there. Yeah, for me, that, that line is way too low. You need to push that line up. They're almost on the penalty spot. It leaves no space for Kosic to come out if that ball is floated in there. Ambersley is taking a very soft jog off the field. I think he took a knock. He'll be coming off. And that'll be the second Fleer player substitution of this match for Tampa Bay. Ambersley, the 30-year-old forward out of St. Louis, is replaced by number 21, Devin Del Doe. Southern California kid out of Valencia, 27 years old, Mulholland. Bends one in, strong header away on the leap by Ryan Miller. Stuart Campbell heads down back to Hill. He'll send one bright back in for Del Doe. Can't quite get to it, it's cleared by the Timbers. Here comes Darlington Nagby dribbling up the near touch line. Oh, how about that move on Devin Del Doe? Made him look silly. And now it's Stevie Evans. Can't quite get control of it the way he wanted. Played it into the 18, but only to the Tampa Bay center backs. Two minutes left, plus stoppage time. Timbers lead 2-0. And Ristoff That's his second is yellow. gone. Yep. A nightmare of a performance for Georgie Ristoff, the leading scorer for Tampa Bay coming into this match. Does nothing this evening. That's but not a good sign. Yeah, commit two bad fouls. Ristoff, to his credit, is standing over Ryan Miller, the injured timber. It doesn't look as if the way Miller fell would lead to significant injury, but he did slide up against the advertising board over there. So Ristoff sent off in this match here in the 89th minute. Now he scored a goal against the Sounders and he scored a goal in the previous US Open Cup match for Tampa Bay, just didn't, didn't uh, bask himself in glory here this evening. An ignominious walk off the pitch for uh, Georgi Ristov. He's now arcing his way toward Caleb Porter. Not much eye contact made there between the Timbers coach and the leading scorer for Tampa Bay. Early shower for the 28-year-old Bulgarian who had played professionally in his home country, also in Israel, 
and uh, Poland and had a nice long look with the Philadelphia Union earlier this season but didn't stick and has been very productive for Tampa Bay. Miller is uh, up but he's got hands on knees over there. He's uncomfortable. Uncomfortable would be the word but jogs back on. San Filippo just kicks one out into a mostly empty grandstand on the east side of Geldwin Field. I'm Keith Blyer along with Aiden Brown. Fletcher Johnson will be along in mere moments. We will have a post-game show for you. Get the comments of Coach Porter. Looks like it's going to be 14 straight without a defeat. And most importantly, a victory here tonight for the Timbers unless disaster strikes in the two minutes of added time. Two minutes of added time here in this one. Valencia coming back from an offside position as Restrepo came all the way out about 40 yards from his goal to take a whack at that one. Look at Caleb Porter. It really is amazing. He is slap. You might have even heard that on our microphone. He is slapping his hands together, still imploring his team to do the right things in the 91st minute of a match against a lower division side up 2-0. Flick on header by Walker. Dangerous moment. Did a nice job there, but was out in front of Del Doe, and here's a goal kick for the Timbers. Timber soccer is brought to you by Alaska Airlines. With low fares and daily nonstop flights to Long Beach and six other Southern California airports. Check out alaskaair.com for our lowest fares guaranteed. Well, two very nice goals out of the Timbers tonight, Aiden. I don't think that they played their best soccer per se. I'm not sure if we expected that. Nagby in on goal here. Only Needham to beat. Cuts back on Needham. Now he's got a double team. Plays it off of San Filippo and a corner kick for the Timbers. But Aiden, would you agree? Not their best soccer. Two nice goals. You advance and survive? I would. I would agree. Very, very nice goal scored here tonight. But it uh, wasn't their best effort put forth. That being said, I, I think you're missing four guys to international duty, plugging and playing guys in different roles. I, I, I think it's a great performance. Guys, I, I don't think, I can't name one guy out there that didn't give a full 100% out there. And I, I really appreciate that, especially in these games when you're playing teams from the lower division. You don't always win pretty, but an ugly victory is much better than an attractive defeat. I wouldn't call this an ugly performance out of the Timbers tonight. It was putting in a shift, beating a team that came in confident, but not with the talent or the depth. And the Timbers have made it to the quarterfinals of the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup for the first time in their history. They will travel to FC Dallas two weeks from tonight, but first, the men from the north side of Texas will come to Geldwin Field in MLS play on Saturday afternoon. Before that, how about the post-game comments of Coach Porter? That's next on 750 The Game. 